option and seeing you know that of course come across this but they went to different communities in Prince William Sound and had people signed to be on contract but what they signed away was their ability to talk about it publicly yeah and my initially I was tweeting and writing and sending out to people do not sign away your right to speak about what's happening because we watched suicides happen because people couldn't legally even talk about this anymore. It was it really tore different places apart. M MMS learned that lesson yesterday. They put a gag order on their employees to not talk about this bill, if you can believe The that. minerals management? Yes, here in Alaska. They said, do, you are not to talk to anyone about this situation. I mean, they learned those lessons too. It's outrageous. And it's true. That just came out yesterday. Well, okay. I mean, it's attorney-client privilege, apparently, so we're not allowed to know about, that the gag order exists. So, so I <laughs> I'm a lawyer. I, I know those tricks, too, I guess. But. Oh, and, and to silence people, I mean, here we, here we just had the Supreme Court come down with a decision that corporations have the freedom of speech as long as they have a big enough checkbook, but they come out and put a gag order against people talking about this. That's right. And, that, and that's a really important thing, because I really felt like after the with our spill that when it came down to it and all the volunteering things that people tried to do to clean it up and what we got maybe 10 percent of the oil for, for two billion dollars less than five percent for two billion dollars you know in two years worth of anyhow um there's not much you can do once the oil hits the water game's over when the oil hits the water thing is is to prevent it from hitting the water but once it has what I'd say to people in the Gulf spill now is to just bear witness, you know, to just see what's happening and record it and speak about it. I think that's really important because the more we can do that, the more we can learn the lesson as a society. Well, I want to ask exactly what you're saying to bear witness. When, when we were dealing with the Exxon spill here in 89, we did not have Twitter. We did not have cell phones for the most part. I mean, well, wait, we had a cell phone, but I think it weighed about four pounds, and you had to wear a tinfoil hat to get it to work. It was the first time I even saw a cell phone ever was during this bill. Um, certainly nothing that could take videos of, of you know, uh, dead whales, seals, otters, um, the bear that were in the oil, the deer that were in the oil that weren't, you don't ever see those things reported, and these animals suffering. I mean, had those videos been taken on phones and posted to YouTube immediately, um, people getting their message out and bearing witness and having other people hear it, how different do you think the spill would have been reacted to, would have taken 20 years, had we been, had the same technology? Because although you were both there mm -hmm. documenting as much as you could. I mean, I, I think that uh the issue is more of one of the tension span. You know, if you look at the contingent valuation studies that were done, and just briefly, this was a study where they went to something like 2,000 people's doors around the country and asked them about the oil spill. Um, it was, you know, scientifically done, and this was back in 1990, I think. Um, way more people knew details about the oil spill than knew, say, that Dan Quayle was vice president. Everybody in this country knew about the oil spill. Everybody cared about it. And they were prepared to pay a lot of money to deal with it and, and, and to punish Exxon and to prevent future spills. So for all the flaws of the media coverage and everything else that, that didn't go right, you know, that part went right. I mean, it was a huge environmental moment that probably could have been capitalized on in a much bigger way, you know, if the other side hadn't been pushing back as effectively as they were. What I, what I fear in this bill is, yeah, they, they've got all the cameras, they've got all the Twitter, but in this media culture, everything's expected to happen immediately, you know, and gee, it has not a disaster yet. Well, this must not be a big deal. And now it's down to the second story and the third story right. and, and gets forgotten so about it before saturation. it even happens. It's a saturation level that's happening, and there's so many other stories. The attention span just seems to turn over so quickly. I mean, we had all the national media in Valdez for weeks on end. Right. Every day, top and, story. And we're going to have, you know, who knows what from all this dispersant that's being squirted out and uh, all the stuff that is gooing around in the sediments and uh, precipitating down out of the water column, a really unknown amount that's really been spilled. Um, what is that going to be doing to the, to the whole food chain there? I mean, just look at, you know, we don't know what, what happened with the herring in Prince William Sound. We will never really know what happened with the herring. We just know they're we suspect, gone. Right? But, but we don't really know because there's a data gap of a couple of years observation. Now, you know, I, I can't even conceive of, uh, 
you know, how vast these damages are going to end up being. Well, I, I can't either. I want to come back and talk about that, though. We've got to run to a break. We're going to come back and talk about those dispersants and what it's like to walk through uh, oil that's covered with dispersants and at the end of the day, your extra tufts have basically dissolved. Um, yeah, because, you know, it eats rubber, and that's what they make boots out of. All right, we'll be right back in just a couple minutes. All right, welcome back. And uh, we're, we're at Bernie's Bungalow downtown, upstairs lounge. On Thursday evenings at 5.30, you're welcome to come. I think for some reason this tonight, people are drinking more than usual. Um, it's just because this is a really difficult subject to talk about. Of course, uh, bringing back the wounds of the Exxon Valdez that have never been healed and, and in light of what's happening in the Gulf. And, and I've had a lot of people contact me. I know we all have. We've had a lot of people say, what the hell is going to happen next? And you're like, you're going to wish you had a pipeline of KY because you're about to get screwed. Um, and in looking at this, the dispersants, I mean, we all know, I'm sure there's people here who have people in their family who have died of cancers or, or friends of theirs who died of these bizarre cancers. I didn't have asthma before I worked on the spill. Um, you know, all of the different health concerns. And I think most of them can be attributed, and maybe you're the person to ask about this, to the dispersants. A lot of questions about that, Shannon. And what we are finding out from the Gulf is that they're not talking about what type of dispersant they're using. The only media report I've seen about it said it was Corixit, if right. you guys remember that yeah. stuff. Which is worse stuff. Oh my God. Which you know, is they, made have a, by, they have a number of different products. Mm -hmm. Which is made but, by Exxon. It's just the, by the, way. the circles just don't. <laughs> Corixit, isn't like, that yeah. the hides yeah. it? And is so that what you, they called it? you end up with, with real problems. And, and remember what we talked about earlier about signing away your right to have any claims against this. If you go out there and to save your industry, if you're a shrimper, which they have worked really hard right. to try and build up that wild shrimp industry. You go out there now, you want to save it. To do that with the right resources, you need to sign away your right to your future health. That's it. And, that's, and dispersants also have a, a, a time that they remain in the ecosystem that, you know, how long is that? Right. Um, we don't you know. know. They're four times, know. at least four times more toxic than the oil. They, 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 we're, we're in a position, once the prevention fails, preventing a spill or a blowout fails, we're in a position where we're having to make these horrible choices. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's what I've been, I've been doing uh, various media interviews and talking to people and writing columns, and, and I've tried to narrow it down to one very, very simple message, which is that spills are inevitable, that, you know, any human endeavor is going to have failures, and once they have, a large spill happens, you're done. There are no good choices, and, and you're going to have a disaster. So your only real choice is, do you value the marine ecosystem so that you're going to simply not do those activities, since you know that these impacts are going to take place, or not? I mean, really, I, I, don't, I think it's right. as simple it's as that. It's a cost of business. It's just that you're making yeah. a decision as a society, and, and, and really one of the things we get into where we criticize Exxon did a bad job of cleaning, BP did a bad job of dealing with this, so it's irrelevant. Well, the, 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 there's no right. way to clean it up. So you're kind of falling into their trap when you say it's all because they did a, such a terrible job of cleaning. There's nothing you could have done. You, and you can't clean it up. Exactly. That is the myth. Yes. That is the joke. I mean, yes. I remember when Dan Quayle came up here during the spill. <laughs> Oh, was help there. is on the way. <laughs> and they, t they built boardwalks mm -hmm. on a beach that was never hit by oil. No, no, it was Smith Island. I was there. It was deep, deep, deep under oil. And they were afraid it was going to fall down. That's why they built the boardwalk. They built a boardwalk into the boat that he had to get. Helicopter comes down. He walks oh, on a boardwalk into the landing craft. The landing craft lands him. He walks off onto the boardwalk. And it's built so he's walking along. And the cameras, it looks like he's walking behind, you know, in the oil. But he never gets off the boardwalk because they were terrified he was going to fall off, you know, fall it down and into what? oil. Like, what kind of image would that be? You were there? Oh, yeah. And, what, and then what, bump his head and so then, he can remember how to spell potato? And then, and then, and then well, come you back. You couldn't have spread some oil on that they, boardwalk? They were, they were, they were, they <laughs> you had a chance. Well, like, <laughs> one thing they were worried about was boots. They got everybody's boot size because they wanted him to have the right kind of boots and everything had to be perfect. And he walked out there, looked around, turned around, walked back, sort of like a you know, walking on a, a model, walking on the runway. Comes Did back, he do the turn? Gets back he on the ship. That was either. the first fancy pageant walking by a vice president. <laughs> and then I, I was the only one who reported there who got to ask him a question. He's way off in the distance, and he's walking by, and all the 
the mess. And there's all these sailors, everybody's cheering. They said, well, how much were you able to see in 10 seconds? And he said, plenty. <laughs> and that was the extent of his media. Wow. And then he got on the helicopter, took off, and, uh, and then was on the and, nightly news. It was a really very and surreal. And still doesn't eat salmon. <laughs> oh, my god. It was, it was just the response, though, to me at the time. I mean, when we went in and we had to be, you know, it was like, we didn't even care about being on contract. We were all following the herring. We'd come up from Ballard and come up the inside passage. And we were just like, we just have to go clean it up. And they said, no, you're a liability. And they basically put restraining orders against people to go clean it up unless they had control over the information right. you were getting there. That's right. And That's, which is what they're the doing human now. information spill, right? They, they can control that, but they can't control the oil spill. Um, you know, and, and this prevention wow. thing is huge because we 